Hello and welcome to Coding Secrets. In a previous video I explained what all the different processors did to run Sonic R on the Sega Saturn, but the DSP chip in particular had the most complex code running on it to handle a large chunk of the 3D maths for the master CPU. I asked if you wanted an in-depth explanation of how the DSP worked and you gave me a resounding yes. So here we go, but be warned, it's extremely complex. First I'll try and quickly explain what I coded the DSP to do for Sonic R. When you create a 3D model, typically that data contains a list of coordinates representing where all the polygons are positioned to make your character, or whatever. However, to draw that character on screen, you need some complex maths to multiply that list of coordinates into something I'll call the World Matrix. Here's some C code showing how the World Matrix was set up for Sonic R. It basically ends up with a mathematical representation of what direction and angle the game camera is currently facing. This mathematical representation is stored in something called a matrix, not to be confused with the matrix. This is calculated once a frame, and then every single point and polygon to be drawn needs to be multiplied with this matrix to get it into the right position to be viewed on screen correctly. That's obviously a lot of maths, and that's where the DSP comes in. The DSP is very, very fast at a very small number of very specific things. Here's a block diagram of the Saturn's DSP. Let's quickly highlight the different areas. This is the multiplier. Obviously it can multiply numbers, specifically it multiplies two 32-bit registers X and Y, a register just contains a number, and stores the result in register P, which is a 48-bit number. A quick note about bits, the Saturn is a 32-bit computer, which means its memory stores 32-bit numbers. An 8-bit number can represent any number from 0 to 255, 16-bit from 0 to 65,535, and 32-bit can store a number up to 4,294,967,295. Obviously, if you try and multiply two 32-bit numbers together, the result wouldn't necessarily fit in a 32-bit number still. So that's why the DSP stores the result in a 48-bit register called P. But because the Saturn is a 32-bit computer, the register P is split into two parts, PL, which is 32 bits, and PH, which is the topmost 16 bits. Anyhow, that's the multiplier. The next area of importance is the ALU, or arithmetic logic unit. This basically just adds the 48-bit P register to another 48-bit register called A, or the accumulator. Again split into two parts, ACH and ACL. The result of this addition is immediately written straight back into A, which is why it's called the accumulator as it accumulates the results of anything added to it. Moving on, this area stores and executes the code, and this area is the memory, split into four different banks called MD0, 1, 2, and 3. Each bank has enough memory to store 64 32-bit numbers in it. Before the DSP code can be run, the master CPU copies the code into the program RAM of the DSP, and then it loads memory bank zero with the current world matrix describing the position and direction of the current camera. Now we're ready to run the code. So the code starts off in a similar way to other assembly language or machine code programs. For instance, this line of code moves the number two into the CT0 register. This effectively tells the DSP that when you pull a number from memory bank 0, it should come from memory location 2 in that bank, so it points to the location you want to retrieve your data from. Further down, this instruction moves a 0 into the CT0 register, and this instruction moves 63 into the CT1 register. All pretty straightforward so far. The rest of these instructions set up various DMAs to copy data from the Saturn's main memory into the DSP, and also set up loop counters and things like that ready for the main matrix math to be processed. And this is where it gets a lot more complicated. If you think this line of code seems to have three different instructions on it, then you are correct. The beauty of the DSP is that all the areas that I highlighted earlier, like the multiplier and the ALU, can execute their instructions in parallel. So it can do the multiplication at the exact same time as the addition, and so on. So the move mc1, x instruction moves the data pointed at by ct1 in memory bank 1 into the x register and also adds 1 to ct1 so it's ready to access the next piece of data when needed. Move mc0, y moves from memory bank 0 to the y register and the move 0 to ct3 sets the memory bank 3 pointer to 0 and all three of these commands happen at the exact same time. So in a traditional chip these would take three instruction cycles but on the DSP, they take a total of just one. The next line down does even more parallel instructions, five this time. 
Like before, we're going to move data from Memory Bank 1 into Register X, but at the same time, we're going to multiply Register X and Y together and put the result into P. We'll also load up Y with data from Bank 0 again, clear Register A, ready to do some addition, and set the Memory Bank 2 pointer to 0, ready to store the results of the maths. Again, all of this happens in one cycle, so X and Y can be multiplied together at the same time as new values are read from memory, ready for the next multiply. So that's five instructions at once, but the DSP can do six instructions in parallel, so here we go. The AD2 instruction adds the P register to the A register and stores it in the ALU register. We read the next data into the X register, we multiply X and Y into P, we read the next data into the Y register, we move the results of the addition from the ALU register into the A register, and we reset the memory bank 1 register as we need to reuse that data for the next part of the multiplication. So let's see all that execute in one cycle. Now, I won't continue any further in the code, as this video is just to explain how the DSP works so quickly. It's not an explanation of how this particular piece of code works. But hopefully you've got some idea of why the DSP was used to speed up maths, and how much of a pain it was to program, as you have to think about every step of the pipeline and get your head around multiple instructions executing simultaneously. A final note, in researching how I coded the DSP back in the day, I came across something in the Sega technical manuals that just doesn't make sense, and should make all of this code impossible to run. I'm going to do some more research into it, and hopefully make a video that will very probably be titled, The Impossible DSP. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.